Let's see, is this thing working now? I think so. So this is Leslie Fry, the founder of Off Trail on Purpose, where I help high school and college students figure out what they want to be when they grow up and plan backwards to get the most out of their college investment and their college experience. And today what I want to share with you, it is personal. I want to talk about how to raise mentally healthy kids who are go-getters. How to raise mentally healthy kids who are go-getters. There was actually something that NPR did recently about whether or not the economy is rigged. And they were talking actually to a gal who was a high school student, or actually she had just graduated from college, and she said that she felt like amongst her peers they were either go-getters or they were kind of the losers living in their parents' basements who never finished college or finished college and now they can't get a job. There's either the ones on top or the ones on the bottom, which we need to work back away from that. You're either a winner or you're a loser. No. We're all human beings on a journey, and each point in that journey serves a purpose. For students who went to college or didn't go to college and they're trying to figure out who they are and what they want, you are not a loser. You are a pilgrim. You are on your journey. And you will stumble and you will come across things that at first don't make any sense as to why this matters or is this really helping you. And it is in retrospect by taking on a mentality of growth that you'll look back and you'll say, oh, this makes sense to me. That, that time when I was lost and confused, it actually taught me something. So I never want to say that simply because you're not a go-getter that you're wasting time. You are living a very valuable human journey and do not discount that. When you are ready to move forward and begin becoming a go-getter, we need you. We need you out in the world to help us solve problems. So how do I define go-getter? A go-getter is somebody who has a vision for what they want and is taking risks to move forward and have it happen. It is not the straight A student, it is not the perfect Val or Sal of their class. It is someone who is getting out there and trying. So how do you raise a mentally healthy go-getter? The personal part for me goes back into my story. I thought that becoming a go-getter back in the day when I was 15 meant that I needed to be at the top. I needed to be seen as a top banana, a leader, a kid who when adults talked about me, they would go like this, oh, Leslie, she is such a good kid. That's what I really, that more than having good grades, I just wanted adults, teachers, my parents, the director of my theater group, I wanted them to Think of me as this great kid. And in my pursuit of becoming a great kid, I learned how to burn the candle at both ends. That was a phrase that my parents used a lot. Burning the candle at both ends. Somewhere along the lines, I got to where I not only burned the candle at both ends, I cut the candle in half and started burning those ends. And then I would cut that into fourths and I would just, I burnt, I burned everything. When you talk about kids who are overachievers, I put overachievers to shame. I was a super achiever to the point that by the time I was in my senior year of college, I was taking, if, if a standard, to be a full-time student, you have to take 12 hours, which means that you're taking uh, four three-hour classes. If that's to be a full-time student, it's 12 hours. And the average student may then take some 15. I was taking 18. I was taking 21 hours, way beyond 
Um, I, it was the maximum course load that they would let you take. So I was taking 21 hours. I was an RA of a dorm. I was stage managing a theater production on campus. I was student teaching uh, at least two hours a week at a local high school. I was in an active member of my college sorority. Um, I was on the volunteer action center on campus. I was president of one honor society, treasurer of another honor society, a member of two additional honor societies on camp. I mean, it was just insane because I had learned to become a go-getter in my definition of what had to happen in order for me to do that. And somebody would look at me from the outside and think, man, that kid has it together. But behind closed doors was a completely different story. Behind closed doors, I was a wreck. I had obsessive thoughts where nobody liked me, everybody hated me, I was an absolute failure. I um, had very suicidal thoughts and preoccupations. I had habits within my own room that I hid from anyone and really was did, did not have it together. I slept compulsively. Anytime I didn't have to be at a class or a meeting, I was sleeping. And then I found myself lying to people so that I could sleep more, lying to professors and lying to my friends. And it took a while for me to get help and eventually was diagnosed with major depressive disorder and high anxiety. And when I was talking with somebody, what they helped me to realize is that I had mental health habits that went all the way back to early high school, if not middle school. When I began training myself how to be a go-getter and how to burn the candle at both ends and how to overachieve and hyperachieve and get straight A's and take a million AP classes and study for tests and be everything. That false belief that I had that in order for people to see me as valuable, I had to be perfect. And that was 20 years ago. More than that. Okay, that was more than 20 years ago. Before Facebook. Before this hyper-anxious climate that kids are in. When I was in college, or when I was in high school, I think the entire time that I was in high school, my junior and senior year, I maybe took four AP classes, maybe five. The average student right now who's on that track is taking four or five AP classes a year. And that's considered normal to them. They are taking way more, doing way more, than students who grew up in my era did. And they think it's normal. So my plea here today, my message here today is to the parents because kids are not gonna be able to dial this down. They think that it's normal because I thought that it was normal. I thought that I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. And now when I work with kids, I actually had a client in, <laughs> I was talking with her and I said, um, so if I were to work with you and help you kind of um, reduce some stress and free up some time, what would you do with that extra time? And her answer was, oh, I'd take another AP class. I will clean off this teeny weeny little area of my plate and I'll put more on it because more is better. And I'm here to say more is not better. More is how you develop mental health problems. 
Research has shown that stress on the adolescent brain is far more damaging than stress on an adult brain. Just like marijuana smoking is far more damaging on a developing adolescent brain than on an adult brain. Or taking any psychotropic drug is more damaging on an adolescent brain. Stress is highly damaging of an adolescent brain. And yet we are asking adolescent people to take on adult habits and adult stress levels and then training themselves to develop these hyperactivity phases and then they crash out and sleep like I did or do things to escape the amount of stress that they're under. So how do you develop a mentally healthy child who is a go-getter? First of all, you need to have a very honest conversation about that child. And they may not hear you as the parent. So bringing in somebody like me who is a professional and who can talk with them and help them understand that, yes, baby, you can get into college and you can have all of your hopes and dreams and amazing things come true and not be perfect and not be a hyper overachiever that it is working smarter not harder that is going to get you to where you want to be it is having a very clear notion of your strengths and how you want to deploy those strengths onto the world and what problems you want to solve and what communities you want to engage in that is going to make your future be something that is bright and exciting. It is not becoming a stress monster that gets into some hyper elite school and interacts with other stress monsters and develops mentally health depleting, stress driven habits. It took me 10 years to retrain my brain and my body to get to a place where I was actually happy and could enjoy free time. So that's what we're talking about, is helping your kids to think bigger picture than just getting into college and getting a good job. It's helping your kids really think about what is success to me? What is going to make me really engage in the world on a long-term basis? What do I want to learn? What do I want to experience so that I can really feel excited and be job ready when that time comes around and not feel like I have to be perfect because employers are not looking for perfect because if they were looking for perfect, they would hire nobody. None of us are perfect. They are looking for people who have some really cool experiences and that does not require perfection. They are looking for people who work hard, not work perfectly. That's what it means to be a go-getter, is learning how to engage people who are doing the things that you really want to do and figure out how you can be a good player on their team. It's thinking about life as a long-range strategy. These kids nowadays, they're going to live till they're like, what, 139? They've, they're going to have lifespans, if we are lucky and we don't pollute the heck out of this world, they're, they're going to have amazing adventures. So they need to have mental health habits that are planted right now in these highly informative years and play the long game. So that's the message that I want to share today is stop developing, stop buying in to the stress train that our culture is teaching. It is not healthy. It is not helpful. It is not about, that. that is not how you're going to help your kids be successful, is to be stress monsters. Trust me. I know. The part of life that is going to really help your kids be successful is training them right now how to have balance. 
So one way that you can help them start doing that is by getting a free resource that I offer on my website. It's really easy to access it. What you want to do is here on Facebook, if you haven't already, you can like the Off Trail on Purpose page. And there's a little blue button on the top header that says Sign Up. And when you click that, it'll take you into a link where you can sign up for something called the 150 word email to get colleges to want you. It's a strategy that has nothing to do with SAT and AP classes and becoming a stress monster because colleges are re recognizing that stress monster students don't work well in the long haul. But how to actually communicate with colleges and have a long range strategy where you can be the arbiter of your college experience and really be the one who paces out the conversation. So if that sounds interesting to you, again, jump onto the website here, or go onto Facebook and use that sign up tab to get your copy of the 150 word email to get colleges to want you. And keep questions coming. I love answering these. I'm gonna start doing these videos every day, Monday through Friday. I took yesterday off because it was Labor Day. But every day, Monday through Friday at 2.30 so that you can begin tuning in and getting some good insight. Sometimes the videos will be longer, sometimes they'll be shorter, but looking forward to connecting with you. Thank you so much for your time and help your kids be go-getters without developing stress monster habits. Help them be mentally healthy. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.